Hi, my name is Paul Thomas, and I'm from Southern California, and this is my layout for World War Brick 2017. Okay, very nice. So I see a lot of planes here. We got some kind of hangars and stuff there. You want to tell us more about what's going on here? Sure. Uh, what you're looking at here is a uh, rendition of the 1991 Gulf War. And uh, this is a uh, model of an air base in uh, Saudi Arabia where the uh, A-10 Warthogs operated out of. And um, you've got several different Warthogs on the flight line in different various uh, positions preparing to uh, take off. We have one that's underneath the hangar over there that's being repaired. Uh, you'll see uh, a welder underneath it. He's welding uh, some broken parts and some panels that are exposed that uh, allow them to work on the interior of the uh, aircraft. Uh, and then you have some additional uh, ones out on the flight, one, one here preparing to take off. Uh, unfortunately, the battery's dying out, so you don't see the glowing engines, uh, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's lit up uh, with a uh, brick stuff uh, lighting kit. Then we've got uh, one that's being dragged along the uh, tarmac here, being prepared to be brought in and rearmed, uh, go back, back out into battle. Then under the main hangar here, we've got a Brickmania kit, which is their uh, Pavehawk kit. And it represents the rescue helicopter and the PJs that would go out and rescue downed uh, pilots that may be shot down during the uh, Gulf War. Surrounding that, uh, we've got several different other activities. We've got a plane being uh, armed with uh, munitions. And then, of course, some security forces here on the base, including some, uh, uh, some uh, Humvees and the uh, Avenger Humvee with the uh, anti-missile uh, system uh, mounted on the back in town. Okay, yeah, well this is this is very cool and I love it. What's the, the like size of this whole layout, if by feet, do you know? Uh, it is 70 inches deep and 90 inches wide, so about seven and a half feet wide and a little over five feet, almost six feet uh, deep. Yeah. yeah, and almost the entire thing here is tiled, I noticed that, so wh where did you get all that from? It's actually not tiled, it's snot. It's all brick. Oh, okay. For the most part, yeah. it's brick. So there okay. are some tiling done on there. Um, originally, I wanted to do all tiling. I wanted to do it in the 6x6 six six light gray tile, but availability online on BrickLink, the cost involved just not met, didn't make it possible to do it that way. So I ended up snotting. I had to use my old gray as well as my new gray together, uh, and that gives it a weathered look. And uh, it turned out really nice. For people who aren't familiar with that term, this snot term, you want to say what that stands for and kind of what the, how, how that technique works here? Yes, uh, snot stands for studs not on top. So essentially what I've done is I've laid the bricks on their side, stacked them together, and a lot of people don't realize that if you lay a brick on its side and lay it on top of a building plate, uh, if you match a brick up against it, it has the same height. So it works out that way. Yeah, I think that, that gives it a great technique, like you said, the weather look with the different kind of shades of brick almost in there. Right, and if you look at most uh, airfields, when they lay the concrete, you'll see seams similar to this because they lay them in sections. And uh, so you get those l defined lines as they build the airfields. So, yeah, works out well. And I noticed you got these, these big roofs on top of the kind of hangars back there. Can you talk more about how, how those were built? Yeah, so I actually started with the hangar was the first thing uh, on the layout that I worked on in terms of design. I saw the kit that was going to be, the A-10 kit was going to be released by uh, Brickmania. I took the pictures online that were available, figured out their dimensions, just in some rough idea, and figured out how high the uh, hangars needed to be and how wide and how deep. So based on those dimensions, I started working on building the hangars. Um, they transport pretty well. I actually removed the whole roof off and take the side uh, pillars out and then put the roof back down on the layout when I'm transporting it. Okay. So it makes it a little bit easier. I built those. I figured out how many tiles I needed on the roof, which was about 4,000. And I had about 1,000 when I started. So I had to order about 3,000 more tiles. That took a few months to kind of get those in over time. And then once I did that, I actually added um, brick stuff lighting kits to underneath them that really allowed you to see more in detail what was underneath the hangers and made them really pop. And as you were putting the whole thing together, I know you mentioned it was kind of based on an airfield during the Gulf War and all of that. Was, was this based on one particular airfield or just kind of, you know, the general design of, of what an airfield would have looked like during that time period? Um, just a kind of general design, even though I looked online, typed into the Internet uh, to find pictures. Um, this is the, technically it's the King Fahad uh, military base, air base in uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, but there were no specific pictures of the base, plus... 
If you ever seen pictures of deployment of the Air, Air Force uh, during the Gulf War, they deployed the whole inventory. So in reality, if this were to be the section that it is, it would be about 20 feet wider and you would see hundreds of planes just stacked up against each other. They didn't have enough, they didn't have enough space for all the planes they brought, so they were really tight on the field. So I kind of had to narrow it down and, and give you a, give an idea of how it worked. So. And what's this like then? You mentioned a little bit about transporting some of the parts earlier. What's the whole thing like as far as like kind of breaking down and transporting it? It's not too bad. All I have to do is strip off the aircraft and any of the loose floating pieces. Um, they're built on these tables on the side, these white edges. You'll see these tables. And uh, they're actually uh, 60 inches or 30 inches wide, 60 inches deep. They're from our tr original train club that we used to belong to. So anytime you build something this size, you have to think about how you're going to move it. So the 60 by 30 inch dimension, there's, there's holes on the sides of the tables. Once I separate them into those pieces, cr it crates up. We just simply put plywood on the side, bolts onto the side of the tables, so the bottom becomes part of the box. We have rails inside that box to add additional tables in, and then we put a top on it, seal it up, and off it goes to home. <laughs> yeah. Very neat. And something that I always think is interesting with builds like this are kind of based on real life events. Have you had anyone, uh, what kind of general reactions do you have? Have you had people who maybe served in the Gulf War that, that have seen this build? I haven't had anybody that actually served in the Gulf War directly, but I've had several people uh, talk to me that have had family members that were in the Air Force or had family members that actually flew the A-10. Uh, I had a lady that uh, stopped by at an event uh, two weeks ago and uh, she got very emotional because her uh, husband was in the Air Force and uh, he had passed away and uh, it was an emotional moment for her but she really enjoyed the layout. Yeah, that's great. I think that's a, it's a really good way to connect with the public with, with builds like this. I think that's, that's really nice. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I really enjoy that part, being able to talk to people about the build, how I came to it, um, and what they like about it. So, Yeah, well, thank you. I think it turned out amazing. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about it. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming by.